Good evening, everyone. Welcome to RadioSilentPlay.com. I am your moderator for today on Sunday, March 6, 2016. Let me start off by saying I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own due diligence before trading any stock or options. Trading stocks and options inquire lots of risk. Just want to thank everybody for joining us, uh, the six people that, uh, <clears throat> that could have joined us uh, late night. I know it's uh, pretty late. 10.35 p.m. Eastern it just gives a, an opportunity for everybody to, to be able to kind of join us uh, depending on their on where they're at. And I know some people are on the West Coast. Some people are in in, uh, in Europe. So just want to thank you guys for kind of joining me today on Sunday night. So I'm going to go over um, a brief setups. Um, last week, um, OTC, a lot of oil stocks rallied. Um, We've started a nice, solid March. Okay, the end of uh, February into the beginning of March has been significant. Um, a lot of stocks that we've traded before um, holding in holding patterns, a lot of oil stocks um, that took some time, broke out, companies like FCX, um, SWN, uh, soon for the small caps, and then you had a lot of um, older stocks like the HPTG, you had um, big rallies on the UPZS, um, APYP. A lot of stocks that were in holding patterns um, did significantly well. Um, and that's what trading is all about. You know, I don't know if a lot of you guys um, saw an MMA fight the other day, but I actually saw one of his interviews, um, the Conor McGregor, um, one of the UFC fighters. Okay, he's uh he's been bringing in a lot of revenue for that UFC company, and the reason I bring this up is because um this guy is 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 pretty good in the sense that he has um <clears throat> that thirst to take on risk. Okay, this guy was a guy that started his uh, career in the lightweight, 145 pounds, and he is a talker, but at the same time he jumped um, two weight classes. And he took the ultimate risk. Yes, he lost, but um, he's where he is because he took on some risk. So um, I know sometimes you guys uh, don't understand, you know, the concept of of sometimes losing a stock. And I know it sometimes hurts, but the main objective is that you guys are here. Okay, a lot of these guys that uh, never take risk and and just play it safe their whole life really don't kind of uh, grow to be the potential that they can be. So I, I want you guys to kind of um, digest that and kind of take that into consideration because you guys are here because you guys want to um, take on that risk and want to improve um, the quality of life. You guys want to grow your accounts. You guys want to become your own central banks. And I think that's very important. Um, you, we see what's happening right now. I don't, I don't talk too much politics, but at the same time, um, the system, governments, they're not getting any better. And with the economy the way it is now, what happens is we have to do everything possible uh, to make extra money and actually uh, produce more than what's taken um, in regards to inflation or higher taxation and quality of life. So I just want to thank you guys for kind of being here. And, and I always thank you guys for your loyal support. So I'm basically going to go over the major markets right now. Um, I know the markets have been ramping up. Um, uh, some traders took some positions into the short uh, range. And I think that right now what we're noticing is a market uh, really getting into that bullish euphoric uh, sentiment. But with that said, um, I think that we're heading into some significant resistance that we have to kind of bear in mind. Okay. Um, when I talk to traders, I tell traders to watch for patterns. And one of the patterns that we talk about is the LA, LA wave theory. Okay. If um, we're considering what the, the SPY, the S&P as the barometer, what the markets are doing, um, we're actually noticing that we're in a potential wave four. So what I want traders to kind of keep in mind is that when we started that market top, um, which was back, uh, I'm going to say uh, October-ish, we put in that high of that 212 level. And now if you notice, now this market is kind of setting in a, what you call a rounded top. If you were look at a weekly, 
range or a weekly time frame, that's how the chart will look. This is the daily chart. And if you look here, okay, the smallest wave, which is wave one, is that first move down and then the, that shorter length wave, which is wave two, never broke above this point here. So that was considered wave two. And then our longest wave, which is always the longest wave, is wave three. And if you notice here, now you're kind of setting in this end of wave four. Usually, okay, the, remember as I previously said, okay, if you're going to do a, a wave, okay, that point is never higher than the previous point. And if you notice here, this is your wave two point, okay? This was lower than, than point one, right? So wave one, the start off point is lower. Wave two is lower than wave one. And if you notice here, now we're getting to this point right here of that wave four level. So you have that wave two to wave three, and now you're potentially putting in that wave four. So what I do see is some resistance. But with that said, okay, this is the magical gap fill that you have here. So I want you guys to kind of pencil this down. I want you guys to write this number down right here. Is that 201 level? Okay, that 201 level all the way up to 20380. Okay, so that 201 to 203 level is going to be a key level. Now, if this market closes above that 20380 or 204 and two consecutive closes, then you may see a retest of that 207 to 210 level. I don't see that happening. But with that said, anything is possible in this market. Okay. So what I want traders to kind of understand is that we're heading into some resistance here. Okay. We've had that bottom here at that 180, which held. But now I expect for this market to potentially roll over for that last wave five before a move higher. Do I think we have a market crash pending? No, I don't. But what I do feel is that we're getting ready to test that 180 to 175 level before we start moving up. Remember when we did that webinar and I did that PowerPoint presentation, I talked about um, the market moving in higher before we do see that potential catastrophic pullback, which everybody's talking about. Okay, so Penny Master says SPY 200 moving average is resistance 297 as well. Okay, pretty much we're close to that. So um, what I started doing, I started positioning here for sure. Okay, I'm not telling traders to do it, but I grabbed some FCS, um, which is an inverse ETF. I'm actually going long for that um, till uh, June. So this is almost like a safe hedge for me. Okay, so I'm going to explain that trade later. What you're noticing here is, Okay, you got another gap filled down to that 186 level and that 190 level, okay? Usually on ETFs, write this down. On ETFs, usually you have gap fills. For the most part, gaps always fill on ETFs, okay? So I want traders to kind of understand that. Now, moving on to the one that's a little weaker, okay, is this one here, which is the IWM, and that's the small caps, small businesses, okay? This is pretty much the small caps. If you notice here, we're in this, what you call this uh, bear flag, and we're right at that tip, okay? We have closed above key resistance, which is that $100 and that 104 level, but at the same time, now we're getting very, very far away from that 21 and 8 day moving average, which I feel is telling us that this is a fake out breakout. Yes, we have a potential gap fill up here at that 111 level, but at the same time, we have a potential for a break of this bear flag. This was a big down move, and now what you're seeing is this potential break of this level. Okay, so I want traders to kind of understand that moving on into next week. Am I telling everybody to short the markets? No, I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to explain what we're going to do, what we're planning to do, Okay, into the into next week and, and the next month for the options. So just bear with me. Now I'm gonna move over to energy. Okay, remember what I told traders. Okay, we're looking for a bottom in oil. Have we <clears throat> have we broken uh, above this downtrend? Okay, a lot of stocks, yes, did rally. The SDRL, we had um Chesapeake Oil, we had a lot of stocks, okay. Um, rally, the SDRL, CHK, 
SWN. Um, we also had solar uh, companies like Soon. Okay, a lot of stocks bounce, so UWTI, but that does not mean that we're out of this bear channel, okay? If you notice here, okay, we're still in a bear channel. We're, we haven't um, broken this channel. If you notice here, this was a fake out breakout. Okay, you kiss this level, another level here kissed, another level here kissed, and what are we doing now? We're kissing these levels. So don't fall in love with the upside on oil. I don't think, okay, we're there yet, okay? Did it give us an opportunity to rally and trade these stocks higher, like FCX, SDRL, UWTI? Yes, it did. But at the same time, what I said is, for this weekly chart, we need two weeks, two weeks close confirmation above this level. Okay, that's two weeks. Okay, if you don't get that, then you don't break that trend line. Okay, if you do break that level, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a two-week break, and then what we're going to wait for is a pullback down to the 21-day moving average to start adding a position on oil stocks. Okay, that's the safest way to trade this. Will some people take on some more risk? Yes, they will. But I just want traders to understand how we look at it and how we perceive this. Okay. Any questions on the oil? Any questions on the oil? I am going to cover some stocks that we've posted. I am, I am going to talk about re-entry levels. But at the same time, I want traders to kind of look at the overall outlook on oil. Okay. Um, this is a stock that um, is in real, really, really big trouble. And I want you guys to write this down because those that are thinking about shorting a market, you always want to short that weaker stock. Okay. This is a stock that I believe will probably hit maybe five, six dollars, single digit uh, numbers. Okay, it's currently trading at 23 in a bear flag on the weekly chart. Okay, you're heading into serious resistance. Okay, you broke this trend line here. So what I want traders to kind of write write down is this Devon Energy, DVN. If this stock closes below its low, okay, which is $18, if it closes below $18, two consecutive closes, okay, any move pullback, up to this eight day moving average is gonna be a shorting opportunity. And we're looking at eight to $7 on this stock. Okay, so I want traders to kind of keep an eye on the Devon oil. Now, if the stock ends up rallying and it hits this high, it has upside to about 30 to $33, we're also gonna short the, the market. So I want traders to kind of keep an eye on this DVN, which is in real, real dangers of bankruptcy and just breaking down. So this is a stock that I'm just giving you guys now because this is the type of stock that I think that's going to collapse. Okay, so I want traders to kind of keep an eye on uh, ticker symbol DVN. I will update you guys on this. I will. I am going to be monitoring it. I haven't put it on our options watch list yet, but this is a stock that I will be watching um, very closely. Okay, moving on to what the market's doing overall economy. If you notice here, okay, we were in a in a bear flag, okay, on um, on the transports, okay, and if you notice here now, we're testing this trend line here. This uh, transports are in a a bear trend, okay. You did break this level. If you notice here, we were in a nice uptrend and we broke down here at this point, okay, right there. We broke at this point on the transports. And then what you notice was every time it kind of kisses this level, it kind of breaks. What are we doing now? We're about to kiss this level again. That's what kind of leads me to believe that the markets are in for a pullback. Okay, I believe that March is going to be a down market for uh, uh, a down sentiment for the market. So um, what I'm noticing, a lot of things are kind of testing levels now. So this is the line in the sand. And I want traders to kind of correlate with what I'm seeing. The next safety net, okay, is treasury bonds. When you start seeing people start buying the treasury bonds, okay, you start seeing the markets kind of pull back. Treasuries work inverse to the markets. So if the markets are going up, okay, treasuries are going down. If you notice the markets are going up, we hit a high of 135, and now you notice that the markets is, is kind of going down, but at the same time, we're kind of, kind of hit these levels of support. Okay, the last time we traded this, it was right at this level too, 125, and I told traders to trade this up from 125 up to 135, and we hit that level. Now what we notice is any pullback down to this 122.50, 123 level, which was a 21-day moving average, is going to be a buying opportunity. 
because the TLTs is pretty much the safety net. When the economies are doing bad, people like going into treasury bonds. Do I agree with it? No, I don't. But that's just the way the markets work. Okay, so I want traders to kind of keep an eye. This is a barometer on what the markets are doing. Now let's go over to the, to the dollar. The dollar, I feel, on the weekly chart is looking strong. Okay, we've noticed that gold has rallied, but at the same time, the, um, the dollar has kind of broken below levels. But I, now, if you notice, you're in, in this bit of a wedge. So this is the line of the sand. I do think that the dollar is going to bounce here. Okay, um, watch that twenty-four dollar uh, break. If it closes below twenty-four dollars on two consecutive closes or twenty-four fifty range, then we'll see a move lower. But honestly, I think that this is going to break higher. You're right at that 21 and that eight day moving average at 25.40, and it's holding well. Okay, with that said, if the dollar is stronger, then that means the market is going to have some weakness. Okay, now let's go over to the, the, the gold. Okay, GLD has broken above this key level of resistance. We have closed several weeks above this level. So now we're kind of starting to settle in on. On a potential bullish reversal okay so now gold is looking stronger so now what you want to start seeing is this consolidation here and look for that 112 to act as a support now if this kisses that 112 level okay if this kisses that 112 level and then bounces then we we know that that gold is in a bullish market okay or a bullish sentiment okay so what we want to see is this thing hold above 112.70 Okay, if you guys want to start taking bites, if this thing pulls back to that 112 at, uh, range, that's going to be your buy opportunity here on gold. Okay, so I want traders to kind of understand that. So what are we looking at? Okay, we're looking at gold is bullish. We're looking at the overall markets are heading into resistance. You got a potential um, pullback on the TLT bonds for a bounce higher. And you actually have oil that looks like it may kind of pull back because it's heading into resistance so next week we may start seeing the markets kind of pull back or start seeing some distribution okay because these big hedge funds are going to start selling into the bid okay so i want traders to kind of understand that so i don't want i don't want traders to start chasing things okay so that's pretty much it um if you look over here ibb the pharmaceuticals okay this is the e etf for the uh, pharmaceuticals we're in a bear flag as well and i have a a stock here that I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you that I feel that has a good shorting opportunity. So overall, that's the sentiment that we're getting here in the overall markets. Okay, I want traders to kind of understand what the overall markets are doing because when you start training these OTCs, okay, I want you guys to start learning where to hedge and put your money. Okay, because it's very important to understand that you don't want to just be a one trick pony. There's a lot of newsletters out there. Okay, right now they're just pushing. Sometimes, um, you know, uh, going for five, ten baggers, and there's no substance because the moment you have bad trade, you lose everything. Okay, I want you guys to start positioning yourself and start learning how to trade the markets overall. Understand what the sentiment is. Okay, what works inverse to whatever, and what we look at to to kind of use as barometers and and be smarter traders. Because what we want to ultimately do is trade like the institutions. Okay, any questions on anything that I've just covered? Any questions? Okay, if no questions, I am going to move along. Okay, what we started doing was we started doing the trading journal. I think that trading journal does good because it kind of just shows the potential and it also shows um, the markets and what has been archived that's been sent out to you guys. Okay, and... Um, it kind of tracks what we're doing and if we're doing things correctly. Okay, so it's a little bit more transparent for you guys. Okay, this is open to free members so they can see what we're doing. Okay, um, first ticker symbol I want to go over really quick. Okay, it's an OTC stock that was sent out back in November 2016. This was a low share structure stocks. One of the reasons I like trading these low share structure stocks is because when you're buying these low share structure stocks, you're buying at the lowest potential range, and what you notice is that these stocks at some point can really, really rally. Okay, this was ticker symbol UPZS. Okay, this was a stock that I knew that had revenues. It was in the, the pizza industry and or the food industry, and it had revenues. When I saw it, I noticed that it was in a in a channel, which I call the line of symmetry channel, 
and they gave us an opportunity to start buying this stock from 0.002225. I triggered it at 2325. Okay, when I noticed this was I have a couple of accounts and then I checked my account and I saw that I noticed that I was up big and it was this stock. Um, this stock ended up rallying. It hit a high of 0.015 and now it's pulling back to this 2180 moving average, but now putting in a nice uptrend. Okay, so I want you guys to understand this. When you're buying these stocks, yes, you can hold. Sometimes you can hold free shares. Sometimes you can just buy these low share structure stocks and at some point they can rally. Feel comfortable with your position, okay? Whenever you're buying these stocks, you have to practice patience as well. Sometimes these stocks tend to take a little longer. Another stock that we sent out was the HPTG stock. And when that was sent out, that was in the low 10s. Now it's trading in the 0.01s. I didn't uh, post that in here, but I want traders to kind of understand the sentiment. Okay, when you're buying these stocks, your objective is to make money short term and long term, but at the same time, just practice your discipline and be patient. This stock never broke below that 20 level. Okay, if you notice here, it never, it just held, held, consolidated, and then just rallied and traded up higher. This, these are the type of stocks you want to be in. Okay, um, next ticker symbol is the NWTR. This was on last week's watch list. I was looking for that 1216 level. We really never got it. But when I started seeing traders start buying that 1618 level and we saw that 20 break, I, I sent it out and I actually picked up shares at 18 and 2021. 20, the stock ended up rallying and hit a nice high of 0 0.0115. This was a nice bullish move. And if you notice now, the stock... Um, uh, the NWTR is kind of posting what you call a bullish inside flag pattern. So what I want traders to kind of look at, I don't think this stock is done. What you want to see is any pullback down to this 0 0.003 range. Okay, that's going to be a buy opportunity for the stock to pull back and potentially trade higher on a bullish inside flag pattern. Okay, so I want traders to kind of understand um, the way that all these stocks are, are trading. Um, if you notice, basically all of our stocks all of our stocks that we trade are virtually the same. They're line of symmetry trades where they're in a parallel channel and we're just buying somewhere near that low or that lower line. Okay. I, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but it's just a pattern that that's basically what we've been doing and we've been trading um, pretty well. So I just want traders to kind of understand all these patterns. Look, same pattern here on the NUUU. Um, this was a times two trade, um, triggered from 21 and hit a high 0 0.006 first move. Then we triggered again at 0 0.002 to 23, and then we hit a high of 0 0.0071. I didn't like the close too much on, on the NUUU, but I do feel that the stock is trading above that 21 and 8 day moving average. So this stock can move higher. Okay, what I want traders to kind of understand is, is when these stocks rally, you want to start locking profits. One of the tricks that I like doing is as soon as I buy, I just set my sell order for 60 days or good to cancel on the way up. The beauty of doing that is that it's almost like being on the lines at BJ's. Um, as soon as you buy your food, um, you get online and then you don't have to wait to sell okay, or to, or to purchase your product. Um, buying these stocks be before the rest of the herd Okay, and setting your sell orders, you're guaranteed that if that stock hits the level that you're selling it at, a reasonable sell order, you'll probably be the first one to sell. So I want traders to kind of understand that. Okay, always scale out. If you know you're buying at 20 to 23, okay, maybe you want to sell some before pivot, maybe sell some at 100% from your level. Okay, this was a stock that hit a high of 71. So there's no excuse for traders not to be getting these trades because these stocks triggered at the buy zones and it gave plenty of opportunity to buy. Okay, so moving on to the next setup um, was the PIP, another stock that just sat at 12.15 for quite some time. Okay, like I say, the proof is in the pudding. Okay, I'm not competing with anybody else. Okay, but when these stocks get sent out, virtually the same pattern, line of symmetry, gave an entry at 12.15. I actually bought this at 13.15. I sent the SMS and I told exactly where I bought and on the date. Okay, and the stock rallied, hitting a high point zero zero five nine. Now, what I'm looking for is a potential pullback down to that twenty twenty five level. Okay, but just a great move on this this stock. It's a low share structure stock, and again, I wouldn't be surprised if this stock kind of fills this gap, as I explained in the video that nobody watches. 
Okay. Um, for the guys that are here that are late, I also have a YouTube channel where I do updates and I go over these things. But um, uh, this stock triggered at 1215. And now I think that at some point we could kind of fill this gap here at this 0 0.02 level. Okay. So moving on to the next one is a gold stock, MXSG. When I sent this out, it was at 1518. We actually did a couple of moves here. It has been an ATM. This was a stock that um, moved 15 to 33. Then we talked about buying the pullback. Triggered again at 15, hitting a high 47. And then pulling back, hitting an entry at 25. And then rallying, hitting a high of 95 now. If you notice, this is just a beautiful, strong uptrend. What I want traders to kind of look at is this 21-day moving average between 0 0.0045 and 0 0.005. That's going to be your re-entry. And simply place your stop close below 0 0.004. This was just a, a easy trade for traders. Okay, this was a bottom play that we talked about the 50% retrace and it kind of hit perfectly. Okay, next stock is the NESV. This was a tricky trade. Okay, this stock initially uh, sent out at the at the range of 13, then hit a high of 26, pulled back, lost that 10 support. Then uh, we stopped out, and then we talked about buying the stock again on the 50% retrace. Kiss triple zero six, and now we're seeing a high of 26, 27 level. Okay, now what I want traders to kind of look at, okay, is we're getting away from that 21 and 8 day moving average. But at the same time, if you look at the NESV, I do feel that we have a potential for a, a bullish inside flag pattern here. And I like that 10, 11 level for a retrace if it gets there. Just look for that, that support level. There's a lot of people on social media saying that it's getting, going to a penny and they may want to push this higher. Um, I think ultimately the stock can kind of hit that 50 level here, 0 0.005 on the NESV. Just watch that pull back down to that 10, 11. If I see a huge bid at 11, 12, then I'll take a, a bite on uh, – on ask, and then what I'll simply do is place my stop below the highest bidder. Okay, so that's that's basically how we trade here at RadioSilentPlay.com. Next ticker symbol is WRFX. I saw a lot of people posting this at 16, 19, 20 level. They were telling traders about a dividend. I saw the stock had no bid, basically. Uh, we talked about that uh, break of that 15 level. I said, if this stock closes below 15, watch out. And that's exactly what it did. I placed my bids from uh, 10 to 13, and I got filled at 11 and 12. Immediately after I got filled, I sent this bad boy out, and it gave plenty of opportunity for traders to fill. So uh, this was just another gimme trade, another line of symmetry. Like I said, basically all our trades are line of symmetry trades. If you're not noticing now, that's basically what the trades are. Okay, um, You're going to start seeing a lot of traders, a lot of traders you know, evolve. And start trading this way. Um, I know in the past, um, traders would just send out a newsletter or an email and then just hope for people to start buying and start pumping on their secret chat rooms and start posting on their social media. It's not like that anymore. You guys got to start being a little bit more active, a little bit more safer, and start you know, paying attention to these buy zones and then trading these stocks higher. This stock hit a high of 20, 26 and, um, or 24. And now the stock wants to kind of consolidate a little bit before it starts breaking higher. This stock keeps trading at 0 0.004 to 0 0.005. So I do expect the stock to rally. Okay, so this was just a beautiful trade on the WRFX. Okay, those guys that started adding at 18, 19, 20, they were the ones selling to you. And then you just, you guys were able to lock profits. Okay, next stock is the ticker symbol AEXE. Okay, you had to move one of 16 to 44. And then we actually triggered and re-entered. We sent out the mobile app at that 0 0.002. We told premium members on Twitter to buy it at 0 0.002 to 2.3. That filled, and then it closed at the high of the week at 39. By no means has this really started. I think this is a stock that has big upside potential. I still think the stock hits 0 0.012 to 0 0.02. Okay, the stock it has around the bottom. Its RSI is just here at 29. So there's a lot of upside here on the AEXE. I didn't post it on my weekly watch list because I don't need to tell you guys anymore, okay? This is a stock that I think that just has that potential to move higher. This is the type of stock that in about a month, it'll be up 100, 200%, and then other people on Twitter will take the, the credit for it, you know? So what I'm just trying to tell you guys is don't be afraid to start positioning into a stock. 
just make sure that you set parameters and keep a stop with the stop close below that level, making you very diligent with your with your buying range and um, your discipline. Next ticker symbol is ticker symbol ICMV. Another stock that I said, watch that 15 level. I said 15 level, if that stock breaks below 15, guess what? It's coming down. And that's exactly what it did. I wasn't bashing it, but um, based on the proprietary methodology that we give to you guys, uh, we start looking at these key levels. I know a lot of people were buying this at 16, 19, and I was just saying, no, it's not ready yet. Stock pulled back, hit that low of 0 0.0011, and then we hit that beautiful move up to 26, which was a great move because I said, watch that 26 level. That's your resistance. And what did it do? Kiss that in 13 level, gave you guys another re-entry. So that's how you trade. And as many people will say, oh, you're just a flipper. No, you guys are traders, and your objective is slow growth. And that's how you trade. All I ask is don't put your exits on the on the chat room in respect to what other people are holding. Okay, so this was just a beautiful move. Um, watch that close above that 21-day moving average. I want to see the stock close above 18 two times. We closed at 19. Watch the close um, above 19. Okay, next ticker symbol is NWPN. Okay, another one. This has been an ATM stock. I told traders watch that 225 level. We kissed 25 and then we hit a high at 0 0.0096. Okay, this was just a beautiful, beautiful move. Okay, feel. Okay, you're saying AEXC, slow. This is fast in my opinion. I'm not understanding what you mean by that. Um, I think the AEXC has given a lot of opportunity to re-enter. Initially, it kind of kissed that 0 0.002 level, gave us that entry at 16. Um, and then the stock ended up breaking out and hitting a high of 44. Okay, I think that the stock has not really gotten its due time. Okay, I don't think that move from 16 to 44 was, you know, uh, it was a profitable move, but I don't think that was the only move that it's doing. That's what I'm saying. I think that the AEXC is a safe trade. I think I like the trade in the sense as a high, uh, a low risk, higher probability for profits. So um, whenever I look at a stock, I always look for a low risk to higher reward ratio. That's how I trade. It may be boring, but at the same time, to me, it's safe. And that's what I like. I like trading stocks that are safe. Okay, so the NWPN, this stock um, pulled back, hit a, hit a low 25, and then you had a huge topping tail here at that 95 level. Hopefully, traders that added somewhere around here, I know Baja had mentioned that he added um, the stock rallied and hit the high of 0 0.009. Okay, um, the stock then pulled back, had a bearish engulfing candle. Um, if you look at here, on the 8-day moving average is at 4.2. What I want to see the stock do is hold, okay, that 25 level. If you close below that 25 level, just uh, look to exit the trade. Okay, then it's done. Okay, um, you say this is trading is slow. I find it to be fast as we move from play to play. This is rapid. Your plays are safe as they come. I think that, you know, um, honestly, I think that uh, trading like a frog, um, going from lily pad to lily pad, will actually give you the opportunity to accelerate, okay, your basic skill set as a trader. Okay, do I think that traders have to stay on a stock and just trade it all the way up. Um, trades don't just go up, okay? What I noticed that works best is for traders to set a profit margin. If they're getting in it on a good stock and the stock rallies and they lock profits and then they want to get into another stock or they want to re-enter the stock on a pullback, I think that's the soundest way to trade, okay? Will I tell traders to exit trades? No, I won't, okay? but with that said, when I give people targets, okay, those are just potential targets. Do they meet those targets sometimes? Yes, they do, but not before a pullback, okay? And I notice that people get discouraged when a stock rallies and then it starts pulling back. That's when people start selling and then they don't make no money, okay? So what I'm telling traders to do, can it be a little bit quick and fast? Yes, it can be. If you notice the BFRE, when we triggered on the BFRE, it hit 1013 and then boom. Hit a high of 29, and I had guys still still in the trade. You know, and that to me is like it, it kind of it's su surprising to me in the sense that traders, 
if they're buying from 10 to 13, 10, 14, let's say, and they're not locking profits 60 to 100 percent, then I don't know what else to say. You just wait for that stock to pull back and then you can re-add. Okay, so I want traders to kind of understand that sentiment. This is the OTC uh, markets. Okay, so this is a lot of up and down movement. Okay, there's sometimes the consistency is not always there. Okay, so I want traders to kind of understand that. If you're trading the OTCs, you have to understand that. Okay, the AWGI, same thing, line of symmetry. And I talked about the 50% retrace when we lost this level, gave a low of 15, and then the stock ended up hitting a high of that 0 0.0056 level. What I'm looking at now, look at that 21 and 8-day moving average, okay? That 21 and 8-day moving average is at 24.27, okay? If this stock kind of starts pulling back, that's your range there. If you're start, you're, you want to look at this stock because you're in what do you call a little bit of bullish inside flag pattern. Okay, so NESP tripled in two days, but took a while for the setup. Okay, Justin Rhodes says, I think, yeah, the NESV did take a lot of time. And I think when the NESV happened, okay, a lot of people were flushed out because um, that stock looked like it wanted to make its move, but then pulled back and kissed that 10 level and then it broke that support. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I stopped out of that trade and uh, I did not uh, get back in that trade. But those who would have worked that 50% retrace level, at that triple zero five level, six level, seven level, um, they would have traded that stock pretty pretty nicely. Okay, so Tango says set your logical profit percentage, take profit, sell maybe all or fifty percent, wait for a retrace and go back. It's an idea. I mean, yeah, I mean this is something that traders can always implement. It just depends on your risk assessment and your risk management and how much liquidity you have. Each trader will be a little different. Okay, there are traders in here that have more money than other people. They may be able to take on more risk. They may be able to hold a little longer or add more shares. I mean, that's just that's just the name of the game. You know, um, it's, it's almost as in, in a sport. You know, some people will not have all the tools to play a position, but what they want to do is play that, the position or some of the things that they can do the best. And if they do that, they'll be sound. What you want to be is a sound trader. Okay, next ticker symbol is the BFRE. As I, as I spoke about it, we sent this out at 11.14. This gave an, an entry from 11.14, then the stock rally hitting a high 29, and then we pulled back to that 21 and 8 day moving average. What I want to see this stock do is hold um, that 21 8 day moving average on two consecutive closes. So watch that 16, 17 level. I want to see two closes above that level, okay? Just a good move from that 11 level to 29, just 150% up um, move. Same thing here, um, small caps, SDRL, we talked about this bottom trend line. We hit this thing perfectly. The stock ended up kissing that 790 level, 597 close, um, about 150% from our entries, which was a beautiful trade, I believe, on the SDRL. So the small caps um, did very, very well. Um, soon. It did a times two trade. First, it triggered here at that dollar thirty-five range. Then we hit the high at two sixty. Then we pulled back. I told to traders, I told traders, look, watch soon. Got back in it at a dollar fifty, and then we rallied. Okay, so I want traders to kind of keep this high because now you're starting to see some consolidation. Is the stock still weak? Yes, it is. But at the same time, we're kind of holding that mental support at that dollar thirty range. Okay, AUY, just a beautiful trade. I talked about this has a long hedge in a downward trend channel. Now, if you notice, gave us an entry at that dollar thirty-five to dollar fifty range, then rally, hitting on that high of three dollars and twenty-eight cents. Okay, this was just a beautiful move for the AUY. Okay, UWTI, if you notice here, you got a little bit of around the bottom, gave that re-entry. This has been an ATM from that dollar fifty range. Now the stock is trading at two seventeen. Okay, for the option traders, okay, um, sometimes it's really hard to pinpoint these bottoms. I was telling traders to look at that 1213 level. We actually bottomed at 1135, and now the stock is trading at that $19 range, which hit our potential. So I am completely out of the FEYE trade. So I'm just hoping that traders locked out of the FEYE. Next ticker symbol is Alcoa AA, ticker symbol AA. This was a stock that I told traders to watch that 735. It actually kissed as low as $5, but yet we still held, never closed below our levels, 
and then the stock ended up rallying and hitting a high of ten dollars just a beautiful trade here on the alcoa the alcoa does look weak though i want traders to kind of understand that i'm going to come over here to the alcoa this is a stock that i may look to start shorting okay because if you notice here you're heading into major major resistance here if you come over here okay you're he heading into major resistance right here this i think is a fake out breakout so just keep an eye on the close below nine dollars if you close below nine dollars two times guess what we're going down we're going lower okay so i want traders to kind of keep an eye on the alcoa if i do happen to take this trade i will post it on the updates okay next ticker symbol is ticker symbol syy just a beautiful trade got flushed down we talked about this trend line here we added at 40 42 50 and then we hit a high of that 45 50 level just a beautiful move on the syy i did lock position so i'm out of this uh position so i want you to make sure that if you are in syy that you have already locked move your stops if you haven't to break even the stock could see a high of 47.49 Okay, next ticker symbol is ALL, that's all state. Okay, we were talking about this bullish inside flag pattern, but it didn't kiss the levels that I wanted to. We added somewhere here at $63, $64. Then the stock ended up hitting a high of $65.59. So I am still in this stock. Okay, I do believe this stock has upset potential to $72. Okay, and that is basically it for the trading journal. Okay, I'm going to go over now the um, over the option triggers. Any questions on anything that I've covered thus far? I know there's a lot of uh, information out here. Any questions on anything covered thus far? Okay, no questions. Okay, so like we we talked about, I do feel we're getting into that pretty much range. Okay, we're range bound towards resistance level here on the S and P Y, the S P, the S and P. I'm sorry, and um, what I'm kind of looking for is a potential kiss of this 202.30 level. I did add a position here on the S D S for June strike 22. I only added a few. My target one is going to be 194. My target two is 190. Okay, so I grabbed the S D S June 15 strikes 23. Okay, we actually I actually picked this up at 90 cents. So I want traders to kind of keep an eye on that. If you want to short the the spies, look for that April 22nd, look for that 192.50 between $1.50 and $2. Okay, so I want traders to kind of keep an eye on that. Another position we took was um the X. Oh man, I posted the wrong the wrong chart for the X. I apologize. I got to update that. Let me go over here. Okay, let's go. Oh no, that's Zoom. Okay, for the X trade, I got to update this. I apologize for putting up the wrong chart. Okay, the X trade, we took this at a kiss. I, I picked this up at uh, $14. Okay, what I noticed here, the, the stock was at $14. I told traders to watch that $14 to $15.30. Kiss that level. Okay, this could be a kiss. Uh, of the level goodbye. This isn't a significant downtrend. My target here is going to be target one of $12 and target two of $10. I will update the chart, but every time you notice that the stock kind of hits this trend line, it kind of goes lower, goes lower, goes lower, and I feel that it will go lower again. So keep an eye on steel. I do feel steel has the potential to come down as low as $9. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I will update this chart. I apologize. I put the target chart. Next ticker symbol is target, ticker symbol TGT. Okay, I took a position here on target at $81.10. I'm looking for that 81 to 83 for accumulation. I do feel that the stock is pretty much extended from this 21 and 8 day moving average. I believe that this stock will retest the 73 level. Okay, what I want traders to kind of look at is the April 15 puts for strike 75. We picked them up at 67 cents. Okay, just simply place your stop close below 30 cents or below 50 cents depending on your risk management. Next ticker symbol is ticker symbol HYG. This is the junk bonds. We've traded it before. Now it's right back resistance. If you notice here, every time it kind of kisses these levels, you're in a downtrend. 
and you're kind of kissing these levels now. Okay, so I did add a position for June puts strike 76. Okay, next one is ticker symbol Tiffany. Uh, this stock has been rallying from the lows. We are hitting key levels of resistance. Watch that um, stop close above 74 on two consecutive closes. I do have a larger stop uh, just because I think that this stock can kiss these levels, but I do feel that the retailers, especially these high-end retailers, will see significant weakness in the months to come. I, I picked up the May uh, puts for strike 65. Okay, um, back to uh, what we were talking about, the IBB. I told traders that the IBB is uh, is weaker. Okay, when I'm, we are pretty weak on the IBB, this is pretty much the chart for the IBB. Very, very weak uh, pharmaceutical sector. You're in a uh, bear flag here. Okay, so what I want traders to start looking at, which I think may be a big trade, is going to be ticker symbol ACAD. That's Acadia Pharmaceuticals. I think any move to test this $23.80 to $25 range is going to be a shorting opportunity. Okay, and that's going to be a short all the way down to about $16. And if that does not happen, what we're looking for option two is going to be a close below $16.50 on two consecutive closes. If this thing closes below $16.50 two times, we're looking at a potential low from $10 to $8. So this could be a big, big move if this thing breaks. So I want traders to keep an eye on ACAD. Do not rush the trade. Wait for either a kiss of this level or a close below this level. Okay. Any questions on that? Any questions on the option setups? Okay. No questions on the option setups. That's good. So I'm going to move along. I'm going to come over to the small caps. Okay, there's not many small caps, but um, I just want traders that, I know some traders are interested in small caps. I know we don't have many traders that do trade the small caps. We've had some nice runners, the SDRL. We've had um, the FCX. We've had the Soon and a couple of others. Now what we're looking at is ticker symbol AZCS. We're in this channel right now. Watch for the pullback down to the 21 and 8 day moving average. This could be a $5 stock. Okay, it is a low risk high reward stock watch for the stock to kind of kiss this level place your stop close below that three dollar range on two consecutive closes uh next ticker symbol is bcei okay this stock right now bonanza creek energy is in what you call a mini bull flag we've closed above key levels of 21 and 8 day moving average that's why i put the buy range at 160 to a dollar 85 potential for a three dollar push Okay, so that's a pretty good 60-50% move from those levels if it can get there. Next ticker symbol is the CRK, Comstock Resources. Okay, we've actually pushed above that channel again. Okay, every time you kind of kiss these levels, okay, you bounce. Kiss these levels, bounce. You kiss this level here, now you're bouncing. Watch that move to $1.33 here on the CRK. Okay, so that's basically it for the small caps. Any any questions on any of the small caps? Any questions on any of the small caps? Okay, no questions. We're going to move along. Beautiful. We're moving along pretty, pretty quickly. Okay, for the weekly watch list for the OTCs, okay, we had a great week last week. I expect a good week this week as well. Okay, um, for March 7, 2016, we're looking at this line of symmetry and sympathy to Flint crisis. So what does the Flint crisis mean? I don't know if many of you are aware, but in Detroit, Michigan, there's an area called Flint. And um, this area has been plagued with uh, bad uh, sewage and bad piping, which has been killing their water system. Okay, right now they have no drinking water or no water to bathe, okay, coming from these pipes. Um, there's they're embedded with lead a lot of these kids are are losing their hair getting rashes or getting very very sick today okay today we actually had a democratic uh convention a, de a democratic debate over in flint michigan um this stock actually started seeing some volume uh last week i noticed that it kissed levels and this is a water purification company 
Um, I noticed that the stock now is uh, is being accumulated. The stock is a low share structure stock. If you come over here and you look at what the company does, Water Technologies and its wholly owned subsidiaries are in the business of designing and manufacturing and distrib distributing atmospheric water generators and related to water filtration products. So I believe that water filtration will be very, very bullish sector in the months to come, okay? This Flint crisis is actually, um, they're saying that more states um, have the potential for lead in their water. So this is significant, okay? So the company has several USPTO issued patents and several international patents in China, India, and South Africa, and Mexico. The company sells and distributes AWGs for the home office and for commercial and industrial use. The units produce drinking water range from 10 gallons to several thousands of gallons. Okay, so thousands of gallons per day. By extracting water from the air, the company also has a line of commercial wastewater and water filtration units for temporary and permanent solutions. Okay, so I'm not saying for traders to kind of benefit off other people's despair, but with that said, whenever you see an in sympathy or you see a sector or you see, um, let's say, an outbreak of Ebola or disease, you start seeing the trend is your friend until the end. Okay, so this is a share structure of just 750 million. Outstanding shares is 218 million, and the float is just a measly 115 million. So I do like the stock. I do think that the stock has the potential to kind of uh, rally has a good working website. Okay, if you come over here to the setup, I think that 13 to 17 will be that buy zone. It did kiss that 12 level, okay, but I don't think that there was many shares traded at 12. This thing triggered at 13 to 15 on March 4, 2016. 52-week low is at 0 0.001, so if you want to be cheap and we want to bid there, um, there's not many people uh, tweeting about this. You can look to start bidding somewhere around there. Um, the security details right here, all the right shares, as I mentioned, 750 million. Outstanding shares is 218 million. If you look here, in sympathy to Flint Crisis Water Purification Company, the stock is in a line of symmetry and low flow trade moves easily. The stock closed at the high of the day, break of 20 and two consecutive closes will signal a break of a downtrend and upside potential to 0 0.005 to 0 0.0125. Like we saw in ticker symbol LEAS, and we saw in ticker symbol NWTR was the same move. Okay, so watch for the stock. Now trading at that 21 and 8 day moving average, you had a bullish reversal on the weekly channel and you have upside up to 0 0.01. I do like the stock. Okay, just be patient. Look for that buy zone and um, set your parameters. Next ticker symbol is ticker symbol PJET. Okay, same thing. Line of symmetry trade. Box pattern. I like that 12 to 15 buy zone. I have been watching the stock and I noticed that there was a big bidder there at 12 and 13. Okay, the stock does have revenues. This is the stock that we've traded before. We traded it from the same level, 12 to 15. It hit a high of 0 0.01. I do feel that the stock has the potential. I think that traders are buying it. I started seeing some accumulation. I believe it was on Tuesday or Monday. They, they pushed the stock to 17 and then we closed at 14. So watch the buy zones here. Be very, very patient. Look for the buy zones at 12 to 13. Me personally, I'm on the bid at 12 and 13. Okay, next ticker symbol, okay, is um, ticker symbol IGPK. This thing triggered on March 4th, 2016 with a start at 12. I triggered a buy zone at 12. The stock closed at 15. 21 and 8 day moving average. 8-day moving average converging into that 21-day moving average. You have a rounded bottom. This stock has really never broken out. Um, RSI is way oversold. I do feel that the stock has potential to this 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 level. So there's a lot of upside. Low risk, high reward. Okay, so the buy zones here are 10 to 13. I'm on the bid from 9 to 11. Next support is going to be 6 to 7. Okay, remarks, the stock kissed a low of 0.011, new 52-week low. The stock rallied from 11 to 18, then pulled back to, to 0 0.0012. Okay, the flow is just 133 million shares. So I do feel the stock has good upside here. Okay, next tick ticker symbol is ticker symbol EPXY. Um, the stock reminds me a lot of the MXSG. 
also the AEXY, but we were looking for that uh, bottom. Look for this stock to kind of bottom out here. Um, I noticed that the stock closed below 0 0.003. I mentioned the stock on an RSP premium Twitter because I started hearing, I guess you can call them whispers, but there was traders trying to push this stock higher at 0 0.003. I felt that the stock was going to break lower. I said if the stock closes below 0 0.003 on two consecutive closes, it was coming down, and that's exactly what it did. So simply, I have my bids in from 16 to 20, got filled at 20. The stock ended up hitting a high of 29. Traders could have locked some profit there. Okay, this is the type of stock that right now it's formulating a bottom. Okay, don't force the trade. Okay, even if you start hearing people, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to run this, they're going to run this, they're going to run this. Trades are like Nikes. Be patient. Let the stock come to you. And I guarantee that you're going to start um, that discipline and that, um, that, that, that positioning is going to pay off. Okay. If the stock rallies, let it run. Okay. But this stock right now is in a buy zone. Okay. The stock closed at 27. Okay. I'm still looking at the 16 to 20 level. I personally added a started at 0 0.0021. Um, on March 4th, 2016, I was looking for that 50% retrace. Okay, the float is just 122 million. The stock lost its support as 0 0.003 as expected, closing below level on two consecutive closes. Now watch that support at 0 0.002, and that's exactly what played out last week. Okay, so I do expect that stock to kind of rally. Next ticker symbol is a 50% retrace and potential three bar drop play. This is a post reverse split stock. Okay, um, I noticed that the stock is a post reverse split, uh, like the Wolf of D. If you notice here, you got one, you got two. You just lost this support here at this 15 level. So I'm going 50% retrace from that. I'm looking at this triple zero six to eight level here on a three bar drop. Um, this stock had a significant amount of shares traded, 95.85 million. So there are a lot of trades. So with that said, this is a little bit higher risk. I want traders to understand that. If you're buying the RCHAD, it's a little bit more higher risk. Why? Because you're nearing these triple zero levels and at the same time, you don't know what the stock is going to do. Is that me trying to scare you? No. It's me making you understand the risk involved in this trade. Me personally, I have a bid in at triple zero six and seven. If I get filled, I get filled. If I don't, I don't. Okay. I'm going to look at the level two. If I see a huge bid at, at 00067, I may take some at 0008. Any questions on the RCHAD? Any questions? Okay, does everybody understand what I mean? That the stock is a little higher risk. It lost its 15 support. I'm looking for a three bar drop. So now we're kind of fishing for bottom. Okay, the lower the stock goes, the higher the risk. Any questions on any of the stocks that we've covered thus far? No questions. Okay, moving on. Next one is a recent uh, repeat thin line of symmetry trade. If you notice, this is big range bound here. Big range bound here. Okay. If you notice here, the last time this stock was here, okay, this stock ended up triggering at 15, then hit a high of 0 0.0125. If you notice here, we're nearing this level of a buy zone. Again, this is a stock that may be extremely dry. This may be a stock that may take some time. I don't mind it. I'm, I've placed my bids from 12 to 15. If the stock kisses the level, I'm in. If the stock rallies and hits a high point zero zero five, then I lock profits. I think that this move between here and here is huge. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to place my buys from 12 to 15 and I'm going to simply place my stop close below 12. I'm not going to buy too many shares. What does that mean? I'm not going to buy 2 million of these shares. Why? Because the thing is that this is a, uh, this thing trades with low volume. Okay, if you notice, you see the volume bars, not very big. So if you want to add some, don't go head first. Okay, any questions? Any questions on this stock? Big range. This one looks like a big spacing and range bound with long and low volume rally move. The stock rally not long ago from 15 to 0 0.012. That's about a 10 bagger, so it could be a nice risk reward at these levels. Okay, next ticker symbol is the BFRE. As we noticed, we did trigger this level. Uh, rally hit high 29, so now watch this level on a pullback for a rinse and repeat. Okay, next ticker symbol is a potential new low on watch. Okay, I'm not bashing the stock. Again, I am not bashing the stock, but the stock 
has been an ATM from 11 to 13 up to to, to bigger range. But what traders are going to do is they're going to start being impatient. When they stop being impatient, it's going to break into new lows. If it closes below 13 two times, guess what? We're looking at a 50% retrace move. Watch the 0007 level, okay? Watch that 0006A level, okay? And um, if the stock breaks above higher, then we could trade it. But I think that this stock may break this 13 level, okay? If it doesn't, fine, it doesn't. But that's what I'm looking at for the stock to do, okay? Any questions on any of the setups? Any questions on any of the setups? Okay, so our uh, Justin Road uh, says RCHAD seems to be one of the lowest priced biotech stocks out there, although debatable how legit it is, I guess. Okay, Justin, I'm not looking at whether it's a marijuana stock. I'm not really looking at whether it's a biotech stock. I'm not looking. I'm basically looking at this stock as a three bar drop potential uh, bounce play. Okay, what I'm looking at is that the stock is a reverse split. I don't expect the stock to do another reverse split. Um, the stock can break that 15 level. It's just confirmed close but below 15. So a lot of people that bought between 15 and 19, they're panicking right now. They're scared. Okay, so what they're going to eventually do is sell it cheaper. Now, if that stock breaks that level, I'm going to look to be very, very cheap and buy it from 6 to 8. If I get filled... I'm simply going to sell it up on the way up, lock profits, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so um, that's basically what I'm looking at at the chart. I'm not looking at it as a long-term, you know, uh, golden play or superior trade. I'm looking at it as traders that bought it from 15 and 19 um, pretty much are going to sell it cheaper. And if that stock kisses that 50% retrace, I expect a 50% bounce. Okay, so that's basically it. Any questions on anything? Any questions on anything that we've covered? Okay, again, I want to thank you for your loyal support. Let's keep the networks going. Let's be very diligent. I had a lot of guys call me up. I was a little bit fighting the flu. Um, thank you for the kind words. Um, those guys that are working hard, 120%, watching the videos, um, sending me emails, giving me a call for the one-on-ones, okay, I commend you. Because you guys are the ones that are going to improve your trading. You guys are the ones that are getting better. Okay. The objective is, is that trading only, I'm going to say 95% of the traders fail. I don't care how much they post that they're winning. 5% is the winning rate. And that's just st statistics. Okay. You guys want to be part of the 5%. Work 120%. Keep an eye on the, on the, on the watch list and make sure you play with diligence and, and be very, very, uh, be very, very systematic in your trading. Okay, don't force trades, don't uh, hope, don't pray. Um, th this is something that has to be very, very systematic, and that's the only way you guys are going to succeed. Um, those that that um, get people to join up, just send me the email, and you guys will get that commission. Okay, if any any questions, just send me an email at radiosilentplay at gmail.com. And I thank you for your loyal support. Take care, everyone. Have a good night.